Hello and welcome back to the Nasty Metal Bar channel here at YouTube. Of course, there is no music on because uh, I did not feel like putting anything on in the background. But uh, that's because I kind of want to go, uh, go through this one a little quick. Uh, not too quick, but at least, you know, enough. I don't want to make this too long. But of course, as, uh, as you can see with the title of the video, this of course is for obscure, you know, I guess this uh, obscure U.S. thrash. Uh, since um, the last two videos, you know, were like all the roots of thrash, whatever. This time, let's kind of just start off uh, with this. This time for the actual, you know, thrash videos, I guess. <laughs> all right, so um, I think we've got a few, you know, stuff right here to show as well. Um, but yeah, here we go some obscure stuff right here. Um, that, uh, that means stuff that is pretty obscure, because I tried, you know, looking through, uh, through my collection to see what is pretty obscure. Stuff that at least people probably don't as much know about, but I think do not as much. Because people know about Whiplash, people know about, you know, a Morbid Saint. Uh, people know about, um... Who else? Um, yeah, pretty much uh, people know about, uh, you know, those two bands that I mentioned. Um, so it's really kind of tough to really find what is really obscure. Uh, but but I, I found stuff, uh, some stuff right here. Uh, right here. That, that means the stuff that I, that is omitted from, like, you know, Metal Blade or, um, you know, or combat, because uh, those are pretty, you know, now uh, already known labels. But yeah, here we go. Um, of course, uh, these guys were on Roadrunner, but um, they're still a band that I think people at this point know, because Roadrunner these days um, did have some bands, and not as many people know about today, so I guess uh, so Roadrunner for me, I think, kind of gets a pass from having quite a bit of you know, obscure thrash back in the 1980s. So one of them is, of course, um, Bless, Bless Death, right here. Uh, this, of course, was with their second album, uh, Destiny for Extinction, which is a good album. It's very, it's definitely good, very Slayer-ish, in a way, or Hollow's Eve. Uh, just a really good album here. Um, yeah, Bless Death. Uh, of course, they released an album for this one, uh, Kill or Be Kill, I think was the uh, title of the album. It's a good, good album. Uh, both those two albums are good. I have not listened to their album after this one, which was uh, released, I think, in the 2000s. I have not listened to that one, but so I don't know how good that one is compared to the two albums. So, yeah, good stuff right there. Uh, of course, another one, these guys were on the New Renaissance label, on which New Renaissance did have a lot of obscure thrash. The one being Kubla Khan. Um, definitely a pretty obscure band, but I think people might know about them because of the connection to Megadeth. Uh, having great... Uh, what's here... Greg uh, Hammett, um, I think that's uh, the way you spell his name, was once a member of Megadeth, like the first part of a really original lineup, like during the demo days. But, um, yeah, and it has a very much that sound, it's very Megadeth, you know, Metallica sound, kind of Bay Area sounding ish, but it's still good. It still has some pretty good, you know, thrashy riffs and speedy stuff here. It's good. 
Yeah, there's nothing bad. It's a little good album. It's actually better than uh, most of the stuff that was, I guess, you can say was coming out of the Bay Area. But it's still good. It's a good album. I really like that one. Uh, next up up here, these are the only two vinyls I have uh, right here. Oh, but man, before I do get, uh, get to that, uh, I do have... I guess, I guess you could say maybe uh, something like uh, Blood Feast is probably, you know, obscure. <laughs> or, um... Or at war, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, stuff that was on that shit. So, fell over. Stuff fell over. <laughs> stuff just fell over. <laughs> now everything ends up being perfect. Of course, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so the first vinyl here I'm gonna show. Now this is a pretty obscure band, I, I think. Very obscure. Uh, but just like with the Kubla Khan, they, these guys have a connection to another big four thrash band. It's supposed to be talking about Blood Come. Uh, this, of course, is my only thing I have by Blood Come. This, of course, is the hard, part of the Hardcore Demo Series. It, basically, it is a demo, but it's also, mo I guess you can say, maybe an EP. But, uh, of course, it's the only thing I have on the Wild Rags label. Another really obscure label, but also best known for having uh, bands like Gamicide. And, of course, even um, probably, uh, Canadian... Uh, Black and death metal band Blasphemy as well as also on the label, but here. But the connection that they have to one big four band is of course having bass player John Mariah, who is of course is the brother of Tom Mariah from Slayer, and of course uh, Blood Come did play a few shows with Slayer back in the day. Um, of course, uh, the, the, their sound it's definitely thrash. It's very Slayer-ish. Uh, probably more closer to like Rain and Blood style stuff. It's very short, but it has more of a punkier edge to it. Thus, uh, kind of playing, you know, uh, within line uh, with my roots of thrash with, you know, the whole hardcore punk influence that definitely shaped up the thrash sound. These guys definitely had a huge hardcore punk type of sound to them, but it's still good. Uh, lyrics, of course, are very jokey, I guess you could say. They're not, you know, of course, tough, such as harassment by farm animals, uh, <laughs> happily married, you know, yeah, already, uh, just by those two songs, you can tell that the lyrics are a bit jokey, but some, I guess you could say, are kind of brutally honest, belligerent youth, maybe, <laughs> first to die. Yeah, there is, uh, there's some, it's a, though, though it's a good EP, it's very quick, so it, it, it's probably enough for, of course they did release a full length album after this, it was called Death by a Closed Hanger, I think was the title, I think that's what it was, I don't have that one, like I said, this is my only thing by Blood Come, it's good though, I like it. <laughs> uh, last one here for vinyl. Of course, I talked about this one before this. Of course, it's Dresden. Very obscure, you know, thrash. Uh, this is their only album uh, titled Too Many Skeletons. It's alright. It's good stuff. It's very Megadeth sounding. Very, uh, yeah. A uh, little Megadeth sounding. Not as much like Kubla Khan, but it's definitely kind of close there. It's very punkish as well. But more closer to maybe something like the very first uh, Iron Maiden album, or maybe the second one, Killers. But it's kind of close to that. But still, I like it. It's good. Um, of course, re uh, last year was it back in 2015. This was uh, reissued for the first time on CD in two disc form. I've yet to get it because the second disc is a unreleased album. So that is definitely pretty cool. So, yeah, I gotta definitely pick that one up still. But, yeah, good stuff here. I like it. <laughs> and it's definitely not a reissue. That is a original pressing of that album. Uh, 
Um, of course, um, I guess I can also talk about these two right here. Of course, uh, just uh, got this, uh, these two last year from the very own Scott Wires, of course, uh, Moshketeers. Of course, Christian thrash metal uh, within that, you know, sort of genre or whatever has some pretty obscure bands. This one definitely pretty obscure right there. It's a good album though. And I guess yes, you can say even his own band, Ultimatum. <laughs> but yeah, I guess you can say they are kind of obscure, maybe. <laughs> they are far from the mainstream. <laughs> but yeah. There you go, uh, that's definitely, you know, pretty quirky for here. Of course, if there's a few other obscure thrash metal, metal bands that you like, that you want to also maybe, you know, talk about in there. Because, uh, um, the United States had a lot of, you know, quite a bit of obscure stuff as well, since it is the state that, uh, you know, kind of created uh, you know, or thrash metal was born in, even though it was influenced a lot by what I did. You know what I showed in the Roots of Thrash Metal videos, but it of course kind of really began, I guess, in uh, the U.S. So until then, um, this is Heavy Thrasher saying I'm out, and I'll see you again.